Hey guys, so today we are going to answer a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, if rendering or server-side rendering or templating, depending on what you like to call it if that's such a common thing, how come no YouTubers are talking about it? So let's get into it. Well, this is a pretty great question and I would even go one further and I will say that this applies to pretty much it's, it's, this has not just to do with rendering it has and templating and stuff of this nature. It has to do with absolutely everything that is real software development, professional grade software development. And let me explain to you. I mean, guys, if you want a challenge, go out to the YouTube channels and see how many people are making GraphQL tutorials. And then you cross-reference that or compare that to how many people are making tutorials about RPC. I challenge you to do that. My guess is that you're going to find quite a few tutorials on GraphQL and you're going to find very poorly created or very, very unpopular videos on RPC. Even though RPC is by far and wide more common than GraphQL is today. So how does this happen? Well, it's actually from my perspective fairly simple there's only two things that come to mind when we ask this fundamental question and the one thing is that number one the youtubers that you are watching are not professional programmers they are either freelancers or hobby level programmers or people who like they are youtubers like they are making videos about programming not necessarily because they are programmers themselves but rather because it is an interesting topic there's quite a lot of benefit to making this sort of content you know this is what i've said in other videos uh, the basics anybody can teach you it's very easy for a person with some very limited knowledge about IT to go themselves, take a few tutorials or a few boot camps here and there, learn the basics and then teach you. I mean, the absolute bare bone basics is to like teach you the syntax. Guys, I can sit next to, I can, I can make a video with a language that I've never used, hold that to my, like on the side of the screen and just read from it with a basic understanding and I will be able to teach you this. But that doesn't mean that I actually do this professionally. That's one possible possibility. The other possibility is that the things that are, let's call them truly relevant and not just hyped within the industry, are things that may or may not make good content. You see, the motivations for, the, for most of the YouTubers out there is not to teach you the things that you will need to learn in order to be prepared to work as a professional. They are out to get views and popular content is much be a much, be much better investment to spend your time on if you want to be a YouTuber than making things that are truly educational. That's the only other option that I can see because let's be honest here, if you're going to spend your time making really good videos, you want them to be viewed by a lot of people. And unfortunately for everybody who wants to be a professional, it's like the, the internet is more about trend technology and things that are popular with the different evangelists and PR and so forth. It's basically a big jungle of tools and possibilities and everybody's claiming the same thing. Everything is equally relevant. It's very much like the shampoo industry. Everybody will promise you the same thing or the protein shake industry. I mean, they're, they're, this industry is, there's no, this is no exception, guys. Popular content will be more relevant for people to create. And if we think about it from your perspective, when you are searching for things and you have absolutely, if you're a beginner, you have absolutely no idea what's relevant. You don't even know what to search for. My, like, my guess is that you're searching for things that are as as you can imagine. If you're searching for how to be a programmer, what's going to pop up is the most popular content. But that doesn't mean that the most popular content is always the most relevant stuff. It's just very popular. So this is why I urge you so much to actually... I'm not saying not use the internet. I'm saying go and talk to industry professionals. You have to figure out how to get a hold of people who are working for real. Not freelancers, not small time one man company consultants, nothing like that. We're talking about people who ideally have a few years of experience working for big companies, ideally 
in a professional capacity. I mean, when guys, when I want to figure out if something is relevant, I don't go to like the bloggers and check out what they are saying because I can't always, I, it's very hard to figure out whether or not they actually know what they're talking about. I go and talk to people that I know have been working for several years and not just with one or two projects. They have actually been around a little bit. They know, I mean, ideally, especially for those of of us who has been around for a little while, you want to talk to the people who have been in the business for over 20 years. And the reason why you want to talk to these people is because they have a solid understanding of software before it became cool. They were there when, like, before all of these trends and technologies. I mean, there's always been trends and so forth, of course, but you, you can you can trust that they are very unlikely to be on a hype train. And it's very hard to find these. I'm very fortunate because I know people like that. I actually have learned a lot of what I know from co-workers that I, I was fortunate enough to meet early very early in my career and they kind of set me straight very very early and they explained to me things that I can look today and I see I can't even imagine when I was more junior that how could I even think this way it feels it feels almost alien now it feels so obvious that I was in the wrong when I was on the hype train with all of these other concepts so what I'm trying to say here guys is that it's very hard to find content and this is you mean this is why i make this the stuff that i make i this is why i even start like this is one of the main reasons why i make videos i you will you will never see me make videos about how to make a blockchain with golang which is probably the like if i were to make videos like that and there are people making this this is like the th- that will trigger every single search keyword that you can imagine right now because it's super popular or machine learning with docker and i mean you can it's not hard to do keyword research guys and figure out what's going to be a popular video but it's very hard for people who want to actually work for real and be prepared to take a job as a real software engineer or software developer to actually find things that will prepare them for 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 real actual work some of it is relevant it's not like everything's bullshit guys i mean react is relevant it's just that it's very hard to get a full picture of what it actually means to be a software developer when you the only thing that most people are interested in on the internet is to promote their own content or to promote a very specific tool or one very specific thing that they need i mean think about it from i mean even from a freelancer's perspective if you have a super popular YouTube channel, that's actually worth something to you as a, at a professional level. I mean, your clients are, you're going to most likely be able to charge more money from your clients. You might make some extra income from making tutorials and selling those as well. I mean, I know tons of YouTubers who actually do this. They have their own little consultancy on the side, their own one man business, and then they make, they make both. It's just a revenue stream for them. And that's the dangerous part about this because it's very hard to find people who are just out to help so what i want you to take away from this is that if you if you wonder why concepts that are failed i mean rendering like templating is standard practice and exists in what in every single server-side language that is intended to be used to make websites everyone every single tool you can imagine has this concept but nobody's talking about it because everybody's on react now or Angular client, you know, SBAs and so forth. The reason is simple, because it's more popular. And what you need to figure out, which is the tricky part, is to is to actually you need to figure out what is relevant for work purposes. Because just because something is on the internet and it's super popular doesn't mean that you're gonna face it in the workforce. Have a great day.